राध माधव कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जन बल भिरीवर धारी जय गोपी जन बल भिरीवर धारी जशोदानंदन ब्रजजन रंजन जशोदानंदन ब्रजजन रंजन जमुना तीरा बनचारी जमुना तीरावन चारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदी गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हरे राम हरे राम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण न कृष्ण हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय हो गौरानिताय 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 जय गौरानिताय जय हो जगन्ना जगन्नाथ बलदेव जय सुभद्र जय हो राधा बल्लभ राधा बल्लभ श्री राधे जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय जय प्रभु पाद जय हो जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय जय प्रभु पाद जय विष्णु पाद परमहंस परिवराज के चार्य स्तर शत श्री श्री माधव चरणारविंद भक्ति विधान स्वामी चल प्रभुपाद की दुकोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय ग्रंथ राशि में भागवतम की जय निताई गौर प्रेमानंद हरि हरि बोल ऑल ग्लोरी टू सेम डिवोटिस ऑल ग्लोरी टू सेम डिवोटिस ऑल ग्लोरी टू सेम डिवोटिस ऑल ग्लोरी टू श्री श्री गुरु एन गौरंग ऑल ग्लोरी टू शिल प्रभुपाद शिल प्रभुपाद की जय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो सेवन चैप्टर सिक्स वर्स नंबर टू चैप्टर नेम प्रहलाद instructs his demoniac schoolmates. Oh, it's three here. Prabhu did 
first two verses yesterday? Okay, we'll read three. I was under an impression it's verse two today. That's okay. Hmm? What that? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. That's okay. <coughs> Krishna, Krishna. <coughs> Krishna. Sukham Andriya Kam Daitya. Sukham Andriya Kam Daitya. Deha Yogena Dehi Nam. <coughs> Deha Yogena Dehi Nam Sarvatra Labhyate Devad Sarvatra Labhyate Devad Yatha Dukkham Ayatnataha Yatha Dukkham Ayatnataha Sukham Aindriya Kam Daitya Deha Yogena Dehi Nam Sarvatra Labhyate Devad Yatha Dukkham Ayatantaha Sukham Aindriya Kam Daitya Deha Yogena Dehi Nam Sarvatra Labhyate Devad Yatha Dukkham Ayatantaha Sukham, happiness. Aindriyakam, with reference to the material senses. Daityaha, O oh my dear friends, born in demoniac families. Dehayogena, because of possessing a particular type of material body. Dehinam, of all embodied living entities. Sarvatra, everywhere, in any form of life. Labhyate, is obtainable. Daivat, by a superior arrangement. Yatha, just as. Dukham, unhappiness. Ayatnataha, without endeavor. Translation. Prahlad Maharaj continued, My dear friends, born of demoniac families, the happiness perceived with reference to the sense objects by contact with the body can be obtained in any form of life. According to one's past fruitive activities, such happiness is automatically obtained without endeavor, just as we obtain distress. And repeat the translation. Prahlad Maharaj continued, my dear friends, born of demoniac families, the happiness perceived with reference to sense objects 
by contact with the body can be obtained in any form of life according to one's past fruitive activities. Such happiness is automatically obtained without endeavor, just as we obtain distress. In the material world, in any form of life, there is some so-called happiness and so-called distress. No one invites distress in order to suffer, but still it comes. Similarly, even if we do not endeavor to obtain the advantages of material happiness, we shall obtain them automatically. This happiness and distress are obtainable in any form of life, without endeavor. Thus, there is no need to waste time and energy fighting against distress or working very hard for happiness. Our only business in the human form of life should be to revive our relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead and thus become qualified to return home back to Godhead. Material happiness and distress come as soon as we accept a material body, regardless of what form. We cannot avoid such happiness and distress under any circumstances. The best use of human life, therefore, lies in reviving our relationship with the Supreme Lord Vishnu. Omagyanati Mirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasma Shri Guru Venamaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Sapitam Jena Bhutale Swam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Sri Guru Sri Utapadakamalam Sri Gurun Vaishnavam Sha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Sri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Bancha kalpaturu bhyascha kripa sindhu bhyayeva cha patita nama pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shriva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Shri Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaurvani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunnevadi Paschata Deshatarine Hare Krishna So we are basically sitting in the classroom of Prahlad Maharaj where he is instructing his friends and we are just witnessing in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam what all instructions he is giving to his friends. It's very interesting that uh, we have heard in previous classes also how Prahlad even though he heard all these instructions in the womb of his mother from Narad Muni the realizations were so thick that while he was in the school with his teacher Sanda and Amarka, the sons of Shukracharya, the great Brahmana priest, and while, they, while he was in the school and he was given practically all the education which was anti to what Narad Muni has taught him in the womb, none of that made any impact on Prahlad's consciousness. We very commonly say, like Bhagavad Gita, second chapter also says, Sangat Sanjayate Kama. You develop your desires based on your association. What whoever you associate with, whatever situation you associate with, whichever people you associate with, you develop your desires according to them. But here, Prahlad is showing a very different experience. Uh, he's, he's showing something very different. Even though a lot of association he's getting of of 
his school mates who were also sons of demoniac parents and his teachers who are again the priests of the demons and all the education which is just to manipulate politics, um, rule, gain power, deceiving, deception, uh, what all you can learn to be a king, a very materialistic, powerful king, all this education is given to Prahlad and nothing makes an impact on him. Mm. And that's only possible if, if one is beyond the stage of a sadhaka, if one is beyond the stage of a practitioner, if one has realized one's eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord, then such association cannot affect. But for all of us, such association will affect. It's amazing when Prahlad was being taught by his teachers in the school, Prahlad really behaved as a good student. They never suspected that Prahlad was not learning what they were teaching because he would reply with all the answers to the questions they would ask. But as soon as Prahlad goes in front of Hiranyakashipu, his father, and Hiranyakashipu asks him, what did he learn in the school? He would start preaching <laughs> Bhagavad philosophy. He would start giving Krishna conscious philosophy. First time when Prahlad was asked this question, Hiranyakashipu didn't take it seriously. He just, out of loving affection to his son, he got upset on the teachers that maybe you are teaching something wrong. Uh -huh. And he's just a kid. He has learned something and kids, they learn something very quickly and they forget also something very quickly. Mm. So now you go and you teach him properly. Hiranyakashipu's point to his teachers were that you have neglected your duties, you haven't done your duties properly and someone from one of the ISKCON centers have come and pre preached to Prahlad. Mm. And Sunday and Amarka were saying, no, it's not possible. We were always vigilant. No one could come from any other source, from any Vaishnava school to come and preach Prahlad. Then Hiranyakashipu was telling, you don't understand how Krishna's devotees or Vishnu's devotees can disguise. Uh, <laughs> so, in that particular verse, Srila Prabhupada is actually saying, yes, sometimes our devotees can go out dressed as normal people to distribute these literatures. Uh, so, even Hiranyakashipu's time it was possibly permitted, you know, that Vaishnavas can come appearing as non-Vaishnavas just to give Krishna conscious philosophy. And then for one full year, again, Prahlad underwent training. Continued. Being, being a very good student, Sandha Namarka had no doubt at all that this boy is not learning what we are teaching because he would reply everything they ask. Uh, he would reply exactly as a good student. But as soon as he comes back again, second time when he came back to his father again, which, will, which, will, which we will see again, that's where Prahlad started telling. Sharanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smarnam, which the verses we did before, and then Hiranyakashipu lost it, that this boy is serious. He is actually infected. And then he pushed him off the Vyasas and his, 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 his lap actually. So, it's amazing when you look back and see, in our lives, when we underwent all schooling and the way schooling system is now, I was just going through some, 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 uh, research on what, what's happening in schools these days. There's a lot happening. There's so much happening that we can't even discuss in open forums because uh, some may get offended. <laughs> what, what all is taking place in schools and what all is permitted. Um, but uh, just, in, just in Australia itself, currently this is, this, is, this is between the age of 15 and 17. Now the number seems very tiny, but it's big. Almost 9 to 10 students out of 100,000 students are committing suicide. This is 15 to 17. And this number goes to 15 to 16 when you take it from 18 to 24. It's because still to student life is going on. You're still in your bachelor's and master's. Whereas if you, this is, this is extreme steps that students are taking their lives, but if you see the 
the depression cases, students going through serious disorders, mental disorders, that number is just so big. And it says, <laughs> I didn't believe it first, then I went to the source, whether the source is genuine or not, because the number is, mild depression is in 44% young, young kids, moderate in 33% and severe in 23% students. That's a big number actually. 23% students severely depressed in between these ages. India's number, the same percentage which is so huge now was only 10% in 1998 and must be much more less before compared to now. So this is, this is a very uh, quick synopsis of current, current education system or, or the world we are living in. But Prahlad was trying to, trying to deal Prahlad was trying to live in, in those times where such problems are not there even amongst materialists. And still, he had full conviction that this is not the way to go. Krishna consciousness or spiritual understanding or spiritual knowledge is the reality and that is the way to go. Now with all the stats also, we don't come to that conclusion. With all these extreme cases, we still don't come to the similar conclusion that yes, Krishna conscious education is the way to go. It's very difficult. In India, they did a, they did a survey on almost 1500 students. And severe depression, 8%, but moderate and mild, almost 30%. This is a huge number. This is again from class 9th onwards. Indian population is very big, so I thought I'll just check the number of suicides. The number was so big, I just turned off. Among students, huh? it's all in hundred thousands. <laughs> the number was so huge. The number of students committing suicide, hundred thousands. Uh, so, the better anyways, we got the point where, where this current education system is taking. So, Srila Prabhupada, in this section, especially the first few verses, is really uh, pushing an idea that how education, current education system should be aligned to Vedic education system, where these Vedic values must be inculcated in current education system. In the name of being secular, so much damage has already been done in society that these very core values, <clears throat> these very core values are looked down upon. If anyone speaks about these, these core values, what to speak of introducing Mahabharata or Ramayana in Western world, even the Western religious texts, you just offend people just by talking about them in secular environment. We have come to that stage. Indian government has done something wonder, wonderful now recently that, that they have decided that in the, in the <clears throat> at least NCRT book, there, this is one of the models which many states in India use where they will bring in Mahabharata and Ramayana as compulsory teachings within the books and they are going to revive and revisit and revise the whole curriculum. And it's amazing, devotees will be happy to know that ISKCON will be leading that effort. Mm. So, uh, it was a big step, but somehow it's happening. Why? Because East is naturally following the West. And West has already gone f quite far ahead in drug abuse, in all other issues which society is facing. And then East is in full competition that we also want to reach and meet the West shoulder to shoulder. Uh, so so the, the drug abuse is a serious issue and a lot of value education is required. But how do you give values which are completely materially based on material based education if you don't bring in the concept of one's eternal identity. If you don't bring into the concept that, that we are on a journey, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, it's not one life, we don't only live once. 
so that you enjoy whatever you can and whatever you can't enjoy the fear of missing that out is so much that you get depressed hmm? this this fear of missing out on what society can provide and i am not getting it has caused such a havoc amongst younger generation that they don't understand that that, that where this is actually leading them and by the time they hit they are in their mid mid ages 35 40 the life is so wrecked that it's practically irreversible mm. it's, it's very difficult for them to come back turn back some of the conservative um, religious people even in western countries are very concerned that the west has already undergone a uh, irreversible damage maybe it's not possible to reverse it now <laughs> that's what they're considering and it's scary uh, the we, we have become so liberal in the name of secularism that these values are have 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 gone so far that it can't be reversed now and the flow or the motion of this vehicle going away from this value is so high that even if some people have realized that we are going in wrong direction you still don't have enough strength to stop the vehicle and reverse it it's just not there and 50 years back we hear Prabhupada saying Krishna Consciousness movement is the only solution to save humanity and if that happens and we hope by somehow the intervention of the Supreme Lord because humans can't do it now it's beyond human capacity to reverse it now if the Supreme Lord and his pure devotees interfere and it gets to a point that people stop that particular live by to live by that particular ideology and they reverse back the damage Prabhupada actually said that the whole world will be thankful to Krishna conscious movement in the darkest hours we saved people hmm? So, um, even though it is possible, but it is a very difficult task. Mm. Recently in, in, in Delhi, I was watching a video. They did a program which is for youth. And the theme of the program is value education, drug-free India. Drug-free India. It is such a menace they are dealing with is that almost 15 to 18,000 students came and joined the program in the drug free campaign uh, just to just to create awareness so a lot of issues are there a lot of issues to deal with but we, here we are trying to understand these amazing teachings of Shri Bhagavatam of Sri Prahlad Maharaj where he is dealing with materialism which has pretty much the same same uh, issues as Prabhupada says in the purport, sometimes it gives happiness and sometimes it gives distress. Prabhupada has very, very politely said, sometimes happiness, sometimes distress. But in other places, Shri Prabhupada has very, <laughs> very starkly mentioned that, that the happiness here in this material world is nothing but a gap between two major distress. When, when you get a break from a major distress in life, you feel very happy. I was speaking to one boy yesterday and he has recently um, his girlfriend basically backed off on him engagement engaged uh, partner backed off and he was really down and and the language he was using was very much like there is no happiness in this world everything is just useless I would better renounce what am I doing here I said hang on just wait for three four months hmm? Till you find a new partner, this language will change again. Huh? You're just in between the in between a distress, <laughs> uh, and just 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 hoping that if that 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 once this distress is over, material energy will again pounce on you, because material energy has two characteristics. It's very interesting how material energy has two characteristics. One is avaranatmika shakti. Avaranatmika means first she covers you. The second is Prakhyapatmika Shakti. Then she beats you. <laughs> so first covering happens and then beating happens. Because while beating is happening, you don't realize who is doing it to you. Because you're covered. And when you're out of that beating time, period is over, and then you realize, oh, 
I have been badly beaten. Then you're, you're so bewildered and fully confused at exactly what has happened with me. And you never blame material energy. And what we do again? After that, we again go and enjoy the same material energy because we never saw her doing it. Because she covers us first. If we realize this is material energy beating me, can, can you imagine if we are two roommates and you know this roommate has beaten me up? Why will you go and again develop a friendly relationship with that roommate? If again and again you are beaten up by the same person. But material energy hides it. She covers so nicely that you never blame material energy. And it's so attractive, and it's so attractively waiting for us after beating that we go and embrace material energy again. This is such an amazing illusion it creates. Hmm? So that's the happiness and distress. And Prahlad Maharaj in this particular verse is making a point that no one is working hard for distress. Now distress, because no one is working hard, Prabhupada also mentioned the purport, but distress comes naturally by its own accord. When you're not working hard for distress and distress is coming automatically, similarly you should not work hard for material happiness because as per destiny, that will also naturally come to you. But it's very difficult to digest this line because the whole education system has trained us that the goal of human life is to be materially happy. And because the goal is to be materially happy, then how can you even encourage me not to strive for it? Or not, not to over, over endeavor for it? Because if I don't over endeavor for material happiness, then society will tell me I am a loser or an escapist. Hmm? There is a saying that talk less and work more. But in spiritual life it's not like that. In spiritual life it is, you talk more about Krishna and materially work less. Huh? Think hear, chant more about Krishna and materially you work less. And if you have to work also, work for Krishna only. Hmm? But, <laughs> but materially the rule is, for a successful man, you just work hard, hard, hard and just don't talk. This, this is saying, you know. So, now in this particular verse, there is a very important point Srila Prabhupada is making. That our only business in the human form of life should be to revive our relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead and thus become qualified to return home back to Godhead. Why? Because material happiness and distress comes as soon as we accept a material body regardless of what form. Hmm? If the goal of human life is to develop one's Krishna consciousness, then why human being is so much attracted to materialism? Any idea? If the goal of soul, if, a, if the goal of spirit soul is to come back and connect and realign in with one's relationship with the Supreme Lord, why we are doing completely the opposite thing? It's a question. Anyone would like to say? Covered by mode of ignorance. That's one point. Thank you. You got the question? If the if soul will be happy. If I'll be actually happy in my relationship with the Supreme Lord, then why am I not acting on it? Because I'm still seeking happiness, right? Why am I not acting on it? So one answer is covered by ignorance, yes. Yeah, one may be ignorant of existence of God, covered by material desires. We forget our goal, okay? Even after reminders, we still do it. Yeah, yeah, true. We don't have mercy of devotees, yeah. Anything else? Why, why do you think? We haven't experienced the higher taste of spiritual life. I'll read something which Shil Prabhupada says. This is, this is a lecture of Shil Prabhupada. He makes, it, makes a nice point there. Yad esha sarva bhutanam priya atmeshwara. Atmeshwara, Prabhupada is saying, atma means self. So everyone's self means himself, the spirit soul, is very, very dear. Just like if there is some danger, immediately then we shall leave this place and try to save our body from the danger 
why we are trying to save the body? Because it is very dear to me. Now, why the body is so dear? Because I am living within the body. So, I love my body because I am living within the body. Anywhere you take, anywhere you go, if you love your house, you love your home, you miss it because you are living there. So, you are loving yourself. Then Prabhupada questions, then why you are loving yourself? What is the source of yourself, which is the soul? Hmm? So, this is from a lecture, Prabhupada is making this point. I will explain it once I read through it. Now, Krishna in Bhagavad Gita says, what is the source of self? Mamaeva amsha jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana. The living entities are my part and parcel. So, what is the source of the soul? Is the Supreme Lord. So, ultimately, Prabhupada is saying, ultimately, I love God. For soul, ultimately, the love is for God. But there are so many impediments I have forgotten. I am thinking sometimes to love my body, my mind, like that. But real love is because I am spirit soul. Therefore, I love myself. Why I love myself? Because it is part and parcel of Vishnu. Therefore, ultimately, you love Vishnu, but we have forgotten it. So, Srila Prabhupada, this is, oh, I'm just reading this one particular part of the lecture, but Srila Prabhupada was basically mentioning that actually the love soul has is for God. Hmm? But this, as many of you and all of you said very correctly, the misidentification or the attachment to the body thinking that this body is my source and I live in this body or this body belongs to me. My love is practically directed towards not my actual source, but to the body. If someone actually tells us, um, you know, if a child finds out, this is an example Prabhupada has given tens of times. If a child really f who is lost and struggling hard to just maintain one's expenses and living on road homeless with no food, no water to eat, and someone just comes and revives the, the intelligence of the child that you are son of such and such a rich father. Why are you struggling on the street? Hmm? Just that information itself is a big, it's a big revelation for the, for the lost child. Hmm? Why? Because the child is finding means to survive just somehow or other trying to live and gain happiness from this material world. But, but as Prabhu was mentioning, uh, Robert Prabhu, we are so ignorant of our relationship with the Supreme Lord that even after multiple reminders, even after multiple reminders, it just does not register. It just does not register. And the question is, why it does not register? Because of very thick, serious identification with the body and the mind. Hmm? But ultimately, as Srila Prabhupada is saying in this book, why we love our body and people related to our body, the actual love is supposed to be for Lord Vishnu. But it's completely misdirected. Mm. And, and then in this particular verse, and practically from verse 1 to onwards, Prahlad Maharaj is trying to educate us on this one fact that we are eternally Krishna conscious beings. There is a very famous verse, Srila Prabhupada quotes, it says, Nitya Siddh Krishna Prem Sadhya Ka Bunoy, Shravanadi Shuddha Chitte Kare Yodai. This eternal attachment to Krishna, this eternal relationship with Krishna is always within the core of living entity's heart. But just by hearing and chanting about Krishna, we just revive it. And commenting on that, Srila Prabhupada says that there is no artificial imposition on the soul that one is part and parcel of God. A, a person who has never studied engineering, you can artificially educate the person and make them work as an engineer. But this is not the case with the soul. We are not artific artificially imposing ourselves as part and parcel of God. This education can never be artificially given to someone. You can theoretically give it to someone, but until they realize it and they come to the platform of, of, of complete Krishna Conscious, complete realization, they will not experience it. That is all understood. But it's not something artificial imposition. Why? Because it is eternal 
लव फॉर गॉड विच इज विदिन एवरी वन हार्ट श्रवण आदि शुद्ध चित्त करे उदय जस्ट बाय हेयरिंग एंड चैंटिंग वन बिकम्स प्यूरिफाइड एंड वन रिवाइव वन लॉस्ट रिलेशनशिप विद द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड इट्स नॉट समथिंग न्यू दैट इज क्रिएटेड फॉर द लिविंग एंटिटी एंड एंड इफ दिस वन वेरी बेसिक सिंपल पॉइंट इज अंडरस्टूड इट ब्रिंग्स लॉट ऑफ सोलेस टू द टू द बर्निंग मटीरियल डिजायर इट ब्रिंग्स लॉट ऑफ सोलेस वन डिवोटी वॉज टेलिंग दैट जस्ट बाय meditating on this fact that i am not this body and mind i am spiritual in nature it creates or brings a revolution in the consciousness because i just stop at least for that moment identifying with all the distress and happiness which material world is offering me and the agony one goes through where my finances are killing me health of my relatives are killing me the distress of something will not happen to my loved ones is disturbing me all the time my ego being trampled upon is troubling me no one giving me importance is troubling me me not being the center of the universe is troubling me all the all the fire which is burning from so many different angles that just starts to go down as we just sit down in quiet and just think i am spiritual being part and parcel of the supreme lord and that theoretically just just talking to oneself theoretically itself has such a calming effect on consciousness that it gives us a light in this very dark night that how this amazing bright sun will day will be if i once realize this one theoretical statement that i am spiritual being part and parcel of god mm-hmm. so it, it it's a uh, it's very it's, it's a very nice revelation to pray for to pray for but what are we actually interested in a lot of our endeavors i'm talking about myself lot of our endeavors is for nothing but material gains lot of our endeavors is nothing for material gains and that's where we'll see in future when prahlad pleases narsingha dev and narsingha dev is very pleased by the sacrifice of prahlad narsingha dev was so upset so angry so extremely angry that brahma lakshmi all the devatas could not even dare go and pacify narsingha dev then they asked prahlad can you please go and pacify narsingha dev and prahlad fearlessly goes to narsingha dev and narsingha dev who is in the form of a lion at least half bodied uh, his face is like a lion his claws are like a lion but his body is 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 different than a lion he, he as soon as he sees prahlad he just starts to lick him to show affection mm-hmm. that's how we see animals they show affection uh, that's how a cow shows affection at the farm we have seen when a newborn is there the mother just cleans by licking mm-hmm. i have i really seriously doubt a human mother can do that when a child is child comes out of the womb mother licks the baby even though the affection is so much but not possible not possible uh <laughs> someone else has to clean bathe wipe whatever you know mother can't just lick but but animals they lick that's how they show affection and but narsingha dev did that to prahlad uh, even though he was the supreme lord but he was in the form of a lion he showed affection how a mother lion or a father lion shows to the cub and he starts licking prahlad is licking licking prahlad and then he is requesting prahlad you have gone so much because of me please ask something please ask something from me you have gone so much because of me and prahlad is saying no no i don't want anything no no i don't want anything hiranyakashipu or narsingha dev is pushing him no you please ask something you have undergone so much because of me you please ask something and this is an opportunity for prahlad to ask whatever he can because the creator of all material and spiritual world is offering you this is a gift card buy whatever you want ha uh, what does prahlad ask yadi dasya si me kaman varam stam var darshaba kamanam hrade asamroham bhavatas tu vrivne varam o var darshaba o best of the giver of benediction you are so great you are one of the best who can give a benediction 
if you so desire and you are insisting me that I should ask you something, please give me one thing. What is that? The prayer itself is just so amazing that it's worth repeating in front of the deities every day. He says, if you so desire and if you want to give me a benediction, please give me this benediction that Kama Nam Hride Asam Roham Bhavatas Tu Vrinevaram From the core of my heart, remove all material desires. This is the benediction Prahlad asked after insisting by nursing the So much insistence and Prahlad is asking what? From the core of my heart, please remove all the material desires. What amazing personality Prahlad must be. And that is why Prahlad, as I said in the beginning, was not disturbed by this negative material association at all. But for us, even some minutes or some some half a day or a few hours of material association, it really disturbs us. Why? Because we don't desire like Prahlad. <laughs> that kaam anam ridas am samaroh. No material desire, please, at all, my Lord, please remove it. <laughs> like for Brahmachari it says, if he is clear that he will not get married, he doesn't get agitated in association of women. Because he's clear. Hmm? It's clear in his head, I will not get married. So, even if he moves around and there is a woman around, he doesn't get agitated because there is clarity. As devotees, if you are very clear, I just don't want any material desire, then material association does not affect. Of course, we have to be very careful, <laughs> still dealing with material association. But it, it, makes, it makes it very easy. If I am fully convinced, I just don't want it then it doesn't affect us. But if somewhere in my head, I am, I am an opportunist seeking for an opportunity in disguise, then the same material association will bewilder me to the core. It's exactly like on a fasting day, the whole temple knows I did Nirjala fasting, but in the shower I drank water <laughs> because no one could see me. The same, here I'm saying shower, but the saying is when you're fasting on a Ekadashi day or a Nirjala fasting day, you go and take bath in Ganges and you go and take a dip inside the water and drink water. This Ganges water you can drink. <laughs> so no one found out. Uh, because you wanted to drink water, as soon as you came in contact with Ganges, you drank water. But if you don't want to drink water, you can take bath for two hours also, you'll not drink water. So that's the point I'm making. If someone is very clear, I don't want any material association or material desires, then material association will not give you material desires. So our journey as a sadhaka is to come to that state, but that will only happen in a realistic way when a lot of investment is done in hearing and chanting about Krishna. Because happiness offered in material world, it does not matter what species one is. Prabhu says, a cockroach is attracted to she-cockroach, but we are not. We just kill or we throw out. But the attraction a he-cockroach has to she-cockroach is just enormous. They go crazy. Uh, or a male donkey has to a female donkey. For us, we don't even find a difference. But they are bewildered and they get restless. Because the happiness materially is exactly the same. So if one really uh, decides that no, no more, then it's easy to deal with it. And then let Krishna Conscious take its time and effect on us. But first let's come to this conclusion, I just don't want it. Uh, Sorry, I just prepared for verse number two. Somehow I was thinking it's verse two, but it came out to be verse three. <laughs> so, uh, Hare Krishna. Any question or comments on what we discussed? Or correction? Pro. Hare Krishna, thank you for a wonderful class. Um, you mentioned how, um, you know, for us, when we go out into the material world, um, even 
for a slight moment we get very agitated by whatever we engage with mm. um, but then you know sometimes we have to go out into the material world to do our duty you know for service of Guru, Shri Prabhupada, yep. the movement, to preach, Sankirtan. And we often hear that when we go out to do these kind of um, engagements like preaching, we have the protection of like Lord Chaitanya, the param Parampara. But then sometimes when we go out to do these preaching, we, we still get disturbed from you know the people we come in contact with, what we see. So how do we understand where, where's that protection coming from? Because when we come back, we, you know, we might have those thoughts and those desires that come up from those engagements. So where does this kind of protection come from when we hear about these kind of things? So it's completely true that when we go out on Sankirtan or for the purpose of the Supreme Lord, or for the purpose of spreading the glories of the Supreme Lord, we are fully protected. Only condition required is that we go out for that purpose only. We are not trying to seek some entertainment or some enjoyment in the name of Sankirtan. Uh, it happens. Devotees have done that. That uh, as a devotee, even if we are very advanced, uh, and uh, I'm talking about my personal experience, we have seen it. Whenever we have taken it for granted that, anyways, Krishna will protect. Let me flirt with material energy. You understand the word flirting, right? Flirt means what? Flirting means you go and you try and attempt something without worrying about the consequence. If you know that if I go and if I, if I flirt with that particular girl, someone is going to beat me, you will not do it. Because you don't want to get beaten. So the whole concept of flirting means that I will go and I will playfully do what I do, but I will be saved from the consequences. That's what flirting is. So we do exactly the same with the material energy. Um, and uh, and we go, we do our bit and we come back, thinking that nothing will happen. <laughs> but sometimes it can happen. <laughs> sometimes you may not know that there is someone with that girl, but someone might be there. <laughs> and you badly get beaten, come, out, come back blue and swollen. It's possible. Hmm? So with material energy it can happen. But if this attitude is not there, even when you are on Sankirtan, of, of playfully trying out your options, uh, then, then Sankirtan, then Lord Chaitanya's protection is 100% there. And for those devotees who are trying and who are gradually coming to that, that standard where they get convinced and they are determined to not even plan and desire material, material gains from any sp so-called spiritual endeavors they are doing, still, if they are intelligent enough to quickly come back and take shelter of Krishna and his devotees, the protection is still there. Because we are all on a gradual purificatory journey. Mm -hmm. So like as you said in your own example, that we sometimes do get disturbed and then we come back and then we unwind all the, all what the garbage we have taken over us. Now imagine if you don't come back in the shelter of devotees, then what? That garbage is going to build every time you go out. Every time you go out, and it's just a matter of time, it will just strike so bad that you're overwhelmed. Hmm? The protection or the association of devotees is so powerful that if this one activity done prop is done properly, it can save us from all the greatest dangers. If this one thing is done properly. Hmm? I'll, tell you, I'll, give, I'll tell you one pastime. Today morning I read it of Srila Prabhupada and the power of, of, of what association can do and what wonders it can do. It was in 19, 1976 in Allahabad, in the Kumbh Mela happens, where few million people gather every 12 years to take bath in Ganges. So this was happening in Allahabad, where three rivers, there is a confluence, Ganga, Yamuna and River Saraswati, these three rivers combined together come together and they meet at one point. You can see black water, white water coming together, like in a line, it's, it's flowing. And Saraswati is underneath because it's not visible. It's pretty much uh, extinct, they say, but it's not in material vision anymore. So these three, they were meet. So Prabhupada was there, millions of millions of people were there, all the saintly, inst all the institutions were there, all the saints were there. So then it was Akadashi and Srila Prabhupada just told his disciples, 
ओ इट विल बी सो नाइस टू ईट लोटस सीड पॉट्स ऑन ए कादशी फ्राइड लोटस सीड पॉट्स तो एज सुन एज वन डिसाइपल हर्ड ही रैन टू बाय टू फ्राई एंड गेट फॉर प्रोपर एंड एज सुन एज प्रोपर सेड टू जेंटलमैन एंटर्ड हिस्स टेंट विद इन मिनट और सो एंड दे वर फ्रॉम रामानंद संप्रदाय दे तिलक यू कैन जस्ट सी बाय द तिलक एंड यू कैन टेल and they came and they paid obeisances to propas and they took out a box it had fried lotus seed pods for propa propa this is for you and he said wow that's nice and he was eating so then this this devotee was uh, telling propa asked him oh have you gone to to the sangam to the confluence of the river and taken bath he said no and he took out a a pot which was filled with the water from the sangam from the three rivers and he said my sangam is here and he started washing prabhupada's feet he said i will, i want to wash your feet because this is sangam this is this is more powerful than ganga yamuna and saraswati combined together and he washed prabhupada's feet and he took water and distributed everywhere means at least to him and his young son and seeing his very gentle behavior and his very his etiquette and all prabhupada told him leave your son with me I will make him an acharya. You leave him with me. I'll train him. He said, "No, no, I, Swami ji. Uh, he he is still learning Sanskrit, and I have plans for him that he will go and learn in the school of Shankara Acharya, Maya Vad, so that he can later defeat Maya Vad." Uh, so Jeev Goswami also did that. So, so Prabhupada three four times insisted him that please leave your son with me. I'll make him an acharya. What Sanskrit will do? What grammar will do? Just leave him. Leave him. He said, "No, Swami ji, it's very. He's very young. He'll be a trouble for you. But I promise you, I'll give him to you. I promise you, it. He is yours. It's not mine. He's not mine. But late, little later, I'll give." Then Prabhupada said, "Okay, okay." And then Prabhupada started rubbing the head of the boy. Boy touched Prabhupada's feet with his head, and then they left. So few years later, devotees were in that similar Allahabad, uh, one of the Kumbh Mela, and then they found out that oh, there is a very young sannyasi. who has who is so powerful that he has practically brought together all the broken sects of ramanand sampradaya and they are all elder to him more experienced but he is so powerful they he that he has brought them all together so atma tattva prabhu is telling this story so he took some gurukul boys and he went to take darshan of this sannyasi so all younger people all elderly bearded saints are there and he is sitting and they are doing fan to him out of respect because he is the prominent one sanyasi there so they all pay respects and they started you know boys started glorifying a sanyasi mantras you know how you, there are some certain mantras you glorify a sanyasi when you meet them and this person out of nowhere started creating poetry to glorify shila prabhupad that no one in the creation has ever been a great person like shila prabhupad and me saying it is not an offense to my predecessor acharyas in my sampradaya huh? and then atma tattva prabhu recognized hey this is that boy young boy who came and met prabhupad because atma atma tattva prabhu had played with him and he said atma tattva prabhu the sanyasi saying atma tattva prabhu i remember you huh? i have ridden on your back also while playing i have spent time with you i have played with you he said my father before leaving his body told me that i have promised shila prabhupad to give yourself to give you to him now you go and you learn shankara bhashya the the teachings of shankara acharya for four years he learned that and then he came out and he defeated shankara acharya philosophy and he has united all the ramanand sampradayas all the acharyas there uh and he said this is my service to shila prabhupad and it is all because of his blessing hmm? so we so the point i was making is the association or the blessings of of very sincere devotees in this case it was a pure devotee shila prabhupad is very protecting and if that blessing is not there and we are just lone traveler moving around you know trying to deal with the material energy on our own whims but there is no place you can go back and take shelter to at how difficult it is it's very scary actually hmm? 
few years back i was in india and then uh, suddenly this realization you know sometimes it strikes you oh my god it's better to live in the toilets here than staying at, in india you know because it appears that it's a holy land but it's very bewildering <laughs> most of the devotees the experience is when they go go to india their krishna consciousness is just shaken mm? so badly uh, doesn't matter even if family is devotee but the effect is very heavy if you're away from the association of devotees so it's very powerful taking should be taken advantage and then gradually we'll come to a stable state of krishna consciousness is it okay anything else yes we Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, thank you for the nice class. Prabhuji, you mentioned that the material happiness we obtain now cannot be automatically obtained per our past deeds. So I'd like to ask the spiritual happiness that we obtain sometimes by listening to Kirtan lectures. Is that from our previous life like we have done devotion in our previous life or is it from our endeavors or is it the mercy of the Lord? So like our happiness and distress depends a lot on our past deeds. uh spiritual life also is a combination of two things our current endeavors and our past uh, crude krishna conscious uh quota to say how much we have developed in krishna conscious in, in previous lives those inclinations those natural desires will 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 sprout uh will basically come to surface in due course of time it's true the only difference between karma and bhakti is that bhakti is independent and when i say independent means it is not influenced by the effects of karma if someone has very bad karmic situation where they are struggling with everything possible they can think of still they can be a devotee because there is there is no uh, there is no dependency of the two on each other but how how you are saying bhakti can come from previous life yes bhakti can come from current endeavors yes it's possible and that's how it happens for most of us especially for those who are on a way in a very younger age are attracted to to serve krishna it is almost understood that there is previous life journey we are we are on um and we just continue with that yeah Is okay. Thank you. Anything else or we finish? Hare Krishna. Granth Rashi Bhagavatam ki jai Shri Prabhupada ki jai.